Hi, all. I hope everybody's doing well. My name is Diana Martinez, and I'm a second year master's student at the School of Environment and Sustainability. I just finished my first year at Michigan, and it's great to be here. Hi, everyone. I am Basila. I am a rising fourth year in the biological chemistry, uh, rising fifth year in the biological chemistry department. Uh, I am from Kerala, a South, South Indian state. It's I'm happy to be here. And yeah. Um, hi everyone. I'm Ariel, and I'm a rising third year in the joint PhD program of Psychology and General Women's Studies. And um, I am from Taiwan, but I've been, I did my undergrad here. So I've been in the US for six to seven years now. Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So anyone in the world. Um, so first, before I introduce myself, I want to say congratulations on your admission to University of Michigan. We're really happy to welcome you to be one part of us. Um, my name is Jishin Lee, and I'm a, I'm going to be the second year master, so I just finished my first year here, and this is my first time to study abroad and from China, so as you like, I'm still like getting used to the whole everything, so yeah, it's happy to be here, and I'm from School of Education, yeah, so excited for this panel. Okay, thanks y'all. So um, I'd love if we could just move through these questions in the order that y'all introduced yourselves. And what I'd first like us to address is, what do you wish that you knew coming um, when you were in your first year here? I think after a year has gone by, I still haven't figured this out, but I think it's coming together. And this distance in relation to housing, um, when I first moved and I first went to visit in June, I was like, okay, there's so many housing opportunities and it was so great. Um, but I think there are little things here and there that I kind of wish I had asked. And I still wish I had asked now to my peers, you know, like where is the best housing or like, what do you do when you pay your bills and type things because each state and across the world is very different. Um, so still, I'm still navigating this, but I think I'm getting better at it. I can say that I apply much earlier than I did when I first moved to Michigan. Um, and it's just a matter of like asking people, right? And putting myself out there with their, with their, with the school or with landlords about like housing situation. Nonetheless, it has been a great learning adventure. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask me. I know I feel like it's a topic that we hardly talk about um, because we're focused a lot of like in what our department has to offer or in our classes, which is also very important as well. But sometimes we forget to ask like questions about housing. Yeah, I think I'll go next. So I was the first international graduate student in my department, like one of the three international students who first came in the department. So it was kind of uh, difficult because the department had a lot of resources, like uh, the domestic students had visited the campus at least three times before they started their first year. So they already knew the department, they had tested the waters, they knew all the students in the department. So there were some in, uh, executional challenges to extend this very good opportunity to international students as well. So I wish I had reached out to the department on my own because it's a very good thing to do. And the departments kind of expect all the incoming students to probably find their people even before you move in fully there. And uh, so if I had done that, it would have helped me in a lot of things like finding an accommodation or like even finding a commute to the airport or something like that or even like uh, important things like getting the social security number or getting my tax papers, just because the department was not familiarized with the international students, it was kind of hard. So those things might be good to know how many international students are already there and is the department equipped to handle that. And in addition to that, I also, uh, 
wish I had more familiarity with the resources on campus. I come from a residential science institute in India. So everything was at one place, but University of Michigan is very huge and really spread out. So it might take some time to find the resources, be it like recreational centers or mental health resources, or even finding the clubs you like, there is a million. So <laughs> it would be good to know all of this. Um, my suggestion is more general, um, but I wish um, I had, um, I knew to value my break and rest time more. Um, I know, especially a lot of international students, the stakes are higher for us. We put a lot of pressure on us and we think other people put a lot of stress on us. And um, I guess one thing that I've learned is it's okay to let the ball drop sometimes. So if, if you need to let go of something, that's totally fine. It would, it would feel horrible at the moment. You feel like you're missing a lot of things, but eventually you'll find that um, it's probably better for your mental health, for your general well-being. And um, so I wish, um, and things elevated pretty quickly in grad school. Um, I, I think that's true for both master's and PhD students. It's just like, boom, it starts. So um, be prepared for that and um, be prepared to schedule breaks and rest between your work time. I think I'm gonna go next. Um, so the one thing I wish I knew on during the first year, um, so as an international student, I think it's very important for everybody to know to understand like adjusting to a new education system take time um so probably like when you like come to Michigan like you're gonna you're gonna realize you're gonna spend like probably one to two months like to really adjust to the new environment and probably you will face the new challenges really to like language proficiency um and cultural differences then this is a one thing i really caught it like cultural shock is a, a lot there are a lot of differences like in the classroom or even like in your day to two, uh day to do uh life and also you you sometimes gonna feel like you're outsider but it's okay you were you were know one thing and i wish i would i i knew at that time like like all the things, they are very common experiences among the, all the international students. And it's okay to ask for help. And there are a lot of um, like resources like we can reach out to, like for example, like a school services, like there are some of, um, uh, there are some of like organization or groups, like they're organized by students where they're organized by your department or even Reckham. And also there are some um, external resources like you can also reach out to like by asking your program manager or your professors, they're really happy to help. And also like, um, also I feel like the non-academic um, issue like really tro trouble me a lot. Like probably like uh, before you enter your graduate study, graduate program, you, you, you may think like, Oh, like the my graduate study, my research, it, they're like the top priority, like in my in my life right now. But actually, like really, even like doing grocery shopping can drive you crazy because there are a lot of differences. But one thing I think um, that we should really knew at that time is like it's it takes time to like just do everything. The same program as me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. I think that was um, really informative. Um, and along those lines, can you share with us what you wish you had done your first year? First, of all, first we just spoke about what you wish you knew your first year, but now what do you wish you'd done? Um, so for me, Michigan is huge. Like y'all are keep saying this and I agree. It has been one of the biggest institutions that I have also attended in my academic career. So I think 
and I keep saying this to myself uh, too, um, but just try to put myself out there, explore other departments, take other classes, um, go for other um, clubs around campus. Like the university is huge. You all know this, right? Um, and I didn't know this too. And feel like I'm still exploring the university. And sometimes I feel like I'm just stuck within the same like general region that I tend to forget to go other places, even, even to find other studies places, you know? And if you go to other studies places, you're gonna find other people and other people are gonna bring you to other places and other opportunities and other connections and even other social opportunities too, you know? So I think for me, it'll be continue to explore the university. There's some really cool spots to study. There's other places that I hear, oh, you should go study there. And I'm like, why am I still doing in this general region, you know? Um, so I think for me, it will be like exploring the general places that there is on campus, other department and other clubs. There's some really cool clubs within the university. Um, there's activity, I feel like Monday through Sunday at school, um, even in the times when it's pretty cold, I feel like there's still like some movement around. So just continuing to explore, um, making, putting myself out there and even asking a stranger, hey, how's your day going? Why are you getting coffee? Why are you getting lunch? Or why are you looking for a book? You know, you never know what that will bring. Yeah, I think I wholeheartedly like agree with what uh, Diana just shared. I mean, that would be top priority in my list too. And also as a uh, science graduate student and specifically an experimental biologist, I think uh, I did prioritize a little bit to read more science literature. I did read uh, enough, but just from the perspective of how to do academic writing myself, I was quite confident about my communication skills. So I thought, oh, when I have enough research output, I would just naturally start writing papers. <laughs> but I wish I had prioritized reading and writing specifically for academic uh, literature more specifically specifically. And uh, in general, I wish uh, I had exercised better work-life balance. Uh, I was ex I am extremely motivated grad student, so it's always difficult for me to uh, acknowledge the importance of break, but I wish if I had done uh, exercise, e e even that's a muscle, like how to do uh, take breaks. So I wish I just had understood the importance of that and then really learned how to incorporate uh, more things that I enjoy, like running or doing group exercises or hiking just around campus. Even I could set up a reaction and just go around. Ann Arbor has some of the best network of parks. So I just wish I had done more of that. Um, again, speaking as an international PhD student, um, I think it's, I wish I had communicated more clearly about summer break expectation with my mentor, um, because summer here in Michigan is very long, it's four months, and um, a lot of faculty, uh, faculty members, they don't necessarily have the mentoring experience with an international student, and they, like, they don't really they didn't really think that they didn't really realize that for international student a home trip could be could should be at least like a month or something um, because a flight could be you know like 15 hour or something so um, a lot of faculty members don't um, realize that so I feel like it's important to think uh, to talk to our mentor about like what are the expectations for summer um, because for, um, at least for most of the PhD students, um, summer is kind of the time for research because during the semester you have to teach, you have to take class, you have to do other stuff. So they do expect you to, to um, do like research during summer, but they don't realize that your home is very far away. And you, and it's, it's hard, it's first of all hard to be far away, to, um, to be far away from home. And um, and yeah, so I wish I had um, communicated that more clearly with my mentor. Mm, so speaking of a summer, I would like to mention a little bit about the winter. <laughs> the winter is really harsh in another. Um, so I I come from the south of China, so where it's pretty hot. So when I uh, when I just spend my first winter in ever that was really um unbelievable so the one thing um so my 
my suggestion is more like um non academic. So because previously I was bringing a lot of uh, summer clothes in my suitcase, but I really like it's really one thing I I really regret. So um for the winter tips um so either you can like um get prepared um, to keep warm for yourself or you can travel to the summer places. So this is uh, one thing about the winter. And also I wish I could explore more about the canvas. So actually there are a lot of uh, places um, that I could like do the self-study or even do um, a little getaway. For example, like I, I mainly study at, on central campus, but I, I almost never, I have no, almost never been to like North Campus, but um, I've been there only like once or twice. But actually, there are a lot of uh, uh, amazing buildings that you can really do self study. For example, like robotics is a really amazing one, and <laughs> and also there are a lot of uh, hiking trail that you can really uh, explore, and also there are like a neighboring places including like Detroit or other places that you can really hang out with your friends, like meeting new people there. That's really awesome. So I really wish I could um, explore those places and uh, get ready for the winter. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, y'all. Um, okay, so we've just discussed what you wish you'd done in your first year. Now, can you share uh, what the best things were that helped you when you first got here? Um, when I first moved and when I knew that I was going to go there and like made my choice to go to Michigan, I actually used LinkedIn to connect with faculty. And I didn't know if it was going to work or not, because like y'all mentioned, like during summer, like a lot of faculty are doing research, so they might be busy. So I just decided to give it a try and connected with all my faculty within my department. Thankfully, everybody um, did reply and I exchanged conversations about classes and they recommended all their students to talk to, uh, which was very helpful for me and connecting and learning more about my department, what my department was like and what the academic world within my department was. So that was to me very helpful. I suggest that if y'all haven't done that yet, um, LinkedIn, it was a very resourceful um, way of navigating me, my academics. And then from there, um, other students will recommend other students to other for other clubs or other interests of mine. Um, so to me, that was very helpful. I don't regret it. Um, I was it was nerve wracking at the beginning. But with that being said, it was probably one of the best things that I done uh, because that until now, like my great mentors are still within the same people that I reached out through LinkedIn. I think my answers also would boil down to just people. Uh, first, uh, I am from a research institute and I moved for a, a PhD in science. So a lot of my friends were going through the same transition at the same time, starting grad school and also moving abroad. So I knew a lot of people who were do, uh, facing the same kind of challenges. And then secondly, uh, I knew my uh, would-be roommate through some common connections. So I didn't move in with a total stranger. I was moving in with somebody I knew. So I tried to talk to her a little bit and get to know each other. And that also helped to warm up a little bit. And she was an Indian too. So we had a lot of uh, commonalities. And thirdly, I started my PhD with a a really good group of people. So we were a large group of really diverse students. Uh, as I also mentioned, we were the first group of international students also invited to the program. So that was good. And uh, the department organized things like the retreat and our course structure also helped us get to know each other better. So it was really good that uh, I made friend, some of my best friends for life within the program. And that's the best thing that's helping me even now. Um, my suggestion would be try to establish establish a life. So that sounds very general, but you can start from small steps. For, exa for example, um, establish a hobby. Um, I got that um, advice from a faculty member when I was at the orientation um, event um, of my department. 
Um, it could be anything. It could be watching TV. That's also fine. It could be cooking. Um, I started Aikido, which is a Japanese martial art um, last summer. And I've been just consistently going. Um, and it's just like a non-offensive martial art. So I'm not going to take anybody down. But that has really helped. That type of like routine kind of thing that really helps me to feel like okay I'm, I'm I'm living here I'm doing something I'm not just going to school and it could also be a daily routine for example I made myself a cup of coffee every morning um, and I find waking up maybe a little bit earlier but spend some time to you know it's like when you turn on your computer you have to wait for a while you don't go immediately to work so like any anything that fits you but engage in something and engage in some routine that helps you to ground or like it, it could get very overwhelming and it, it go crazy like it without you realizing so um it's important to have a life okay i will go next um so for the best things that help me um went through the first year actually there are a lot of uh, things um so I kind of agree that you should like get ready uh, like get prepared first like earlier before you come here like for example like connecting with people on, on LinkedIn so one thing I did because um I, I like I was pretty sure like I'm going to apply for a PhD uh even before my master so one thing I think for people who want to like really spend your time in academia, I really uh, recommend you on uh, to use Twitter. So I think everybody, everybody probably everybody uh, use that. So because there are a lot of the researchers, like including the professor or seniors or PhD, like they mainly use like um. Twitter to connect with each other. So uh, previously, I was connecting with a, a couple of professors, and also like there's on the PhD student who like uh, they're studying the same uh, subject matter on uh, as me. So so before I came here, I already had some of a connection with them. So I can send an email like say hey, because you can uh, like send a code email say. I'm interested in your research. I want to connect with you. So, um, so before you send an email, you already connected with the people on LinkedIn or Twitter. So you can say like, yeah, we're connected on, um, like ABC social media. So I'm very interested in your, um, research, and I have I have read some of your papers, some of the parts that you're very interested in. So they're a very uh, valuable thing, like really help me like to connect with people, especially people who are doing research. And also um, there's a one website I want to show uh, that is on um, the ELI. I don't know like how many people know that know about that. It's English Language Institute. So um, they have a lot of uh, ongoing workshops on, um, so when this, when uh, each semester starts. So I'm gonna share um, in the chat. So if you are not very like confident with your uh, English ability, or even you want to like practice a lot of uh, ways of a communication, or even like how to practice your small talk, how to understand American humor. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, available, a lot of amazing workshop that you can really participate in and and also like there actually there are a lot of uh, websites like I can like share with you probably by the end of uh, this panel. Um, so also like um, one thing and also like that thing like help me like went through the first year is like learn to manage your stress like learn to find the word like balance not like. Because probably you're going to feel like a lot of uh, academic burnout because this is you, Mitch. <laughs> you are studying with the most amazing people in the world, probably on the planet. <laughs> so it's very important to like manage your stress and like talk with your friends or even professor, your, your like program manager. They can really give you very um, informative suggestion. Yeah, that is everything. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So um, as we transition, 
into our Q&A. Uh, my colleague is going to place our evaluation survey in the chat. Uh, can you please just do me a favor and open the link now so that you'll have the tab open and ready for you um, when we're done. So I want to remind you that we'll be moving through this Q&A by keeping a stack. And for those of you who missed it, it's just going down the line of those who are black if they have a question in order of appearance. And so remember that there are three ways to get on the stack. You can either use the raise your hand function, you can write stack in the chat, or you can write your question in the chat and I will ask your question for you. Um, please remember to speak slowly so that the closed captioning can capture all that you say and Yes, let's get started. Who has questions for our panel? Well, while we help our, or wait for our audience to come up with their brilliant questions, I have a question for all of you. Almost every one of y'all mentioned work-life balance in some way. Um, that Eric, um, Jason, you just mentioned um, managing stress. Vasily, you talked about uh, the muscle that you need uh, to exercise. And Ariel, you said like learning how to schedule breaks and it's okay letting the ball drop. Can y'all or like go more into like, what does this look like? How did you learn it? Um, and how are you exercising this muscle, strengthening it? For, for me, um, I do like planning. So for me, I would plan time, for example, to go to gym or like to go to Aikido class or like I plan time for me to maybe like read a book. And um, I also need to, I think one thing that I learned is that I need to prioritize breaks sometimes because oftentimes you will feel like, okay, I'm going to finish my work and I'm going to play. But most of the time, it's not going to happen. You're just going to work until, until you go to sleep. So I, I try to um, tell myself that it's okay if I read like book for like 30 minutes or like if I watch TV for like 30, 30 minutes, it's fine. I prioritize that um, over my work sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an opposite. I'm opposite of that. I struggle with planning. <laughs> I am not a planner, but uh, I, I, I mean, yeah, but I do run into burnout a lot because of that, because I'm just so focused on science at a time, or I'm so focused on working out or like something like that, uh, or reading. So yeah, what I am trying to do more now is to plan like, you, yeah, I think it's better to enjoy things in bits than to be overwhelmed. The obsession helps with science, but nothing else. <laughs> I think for me, I actually learned this during winter. Um, as y'all mentioned that winter is cold and dark. Well, it was actually cold and dark for me as well. And so I realized that I needed to do something. I was actually oversleeping, which at the beginning I was like, okay, well, I, I did, didn't do great the first semester, right? So I'll catch up on my sleep. So actually that was not great because I was oversleeping. So I actually started to get up early, started to exercise, started to walk, take pictures of birds, um, doing more exercise, have an actual breakfast, um, shower for a good amount of time and starting to like balancing it out and then doing homework in between, right? Studying and meeting with people and like having a more busy time. And actually that really helps a lot um, because it's important. Also, I don't know if you mentioned this, but I think also sleeping is good right? Because sometimes we also forget and we don't really talk about this. Um, I used to do that the first semester. I'm like, okay, I'll finish this until like 1 a.m. But that was actually not great because then it, it came over for the next semester, right? So having that properly balanced, I think it's key, especially for being a master's student or a PhD student or just doing research in general. Uh, well, for me, like, so my, actually, I haven't found my lifetime hobby like two years ago. Like I'm, a, I, so I'm a stand of a doing workout. So I think doing workout kind of helped me like to focus and really to stay focused on my study or my like, or my day-to-day -day life. So um, for the planning 
Also, I'm gonna make a to do list every single day. So you can either put on the like the sticker, like physical sticker on in your apartment, your on your wall, or even you can like write everything down on a Google document or on um, on your lap on your along on the everywhere. Like you can stick everywhere. So um, actually, as I said at, at the very beginning, like everything takes time. So you need to find a way like really see you better. There probably there are a lot of suggestions to help you focus, help you plan, but you should really find a way that really make you comfortable to do that. Thanks y'all. So um, someone asked, is there anything that you wish you knew sooner about the campus or, and the facilities? I'll just emphasize this a little bit, but I didn't realize how big Michigan is. And again, I'm still rediscovering or discovering day by day. Um, so traveling within the bus or like asking other people uh, because there's just so much, even other labs have like their general facilities. Um, if you get to explore or some of the labs are like super cool. There's some really great stuff down there or like up there. Um, but it's very big. Um, so if you're not used to like or come from a very small university like I did and going to a big university, I think for me, that's still like trying to figure out ways. I think um, you I recommend really like go on to Rackham um, website and see like what scholarships and fellowships are available, um, especially for to uh, for international students because international students are not eligible for a lot of outside funding from like national institutes. So we only we can only rely on university um, fellowships and scholarships, and sometimes they have like a very early deadline. So um, I would recommend just go on and browse and see like which one you want to apply for in the future and you can plan a little bit. Also, um, just one more thing. Also, I wanted to mention that Rackham has an international, um, sorry, emergency funding. So in the case of emergency that you need, maybe like um, some more financial support, you can always apply for that. For example, um, I there's a family loss um, earlier this year, so I need to travel back to home, and the tickets are expensive, so I um, apply for the emergency funding. Mm -hmm. Y'all, when is it a good time to contact professors for GSI or research lab work? Would it be before coming to Michigan or do you do it or is it better to do it after classes start or will that be too late? Mm, actually, I just answered a question, but I can answer it again. Uh, so for me, um, I think it's any time. But as I said, you cannot just like send a code emails. You should have a, at least some of a connection with the professor, either on the social media or you have a read on their papers first, because uh, you should understand like what kind, what type of research, what type of work uh, the professor they're doing, and you should understand, you should get familiar with them. So then you can send emails to the professor or either on, on the website, because on, uh, on UMich website, we have uh, like for on-campus job opportunities, either for the temporary or even for the GSI. Um, I can send a link later. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea to look up the professors and have some GSI set up even before coming in. Uh, I didn't do that and I was totally fine. Uh, so in our program, they let us try at least four labs before we pick one to do a PhD in. Uh, the department gave multiple opportunities. So I also came in through an umbrella program called PIBS. So they had multiple events where we could talk to professors and match with them. But I would say in general, it's a good idea to go through the uh, list of available professors and try to contact them or the students in the lab or any way and just set up the what we call rotations.
Um, for me, I actually did this way in May, uh, but you can do it anytime. When I knew about it, uh, I did it back in May. And if uh, professors didn't get back to me, then I redid it again. And it's also a way that show that you're interested in it. Uh, whatever it is, this research or the position, they, they all know that you're interested in it. And it's a way to communicate with them. And so if that doesn't occur, then when you get to school, then you can mention that. And they know that you're interested in the position on it. You know, how does someone connect to seniors who are in the same program to help them navigate grad school and maybe the job search as well? Mm -hmm. Um. So, sorry. Go ahead. Oh. Uh. Did you tell me? I I'll go anyway. So, uh, in the case of uh, 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 biomedical science students, almost all the department website looks the same because they are bound to be the same. It has a template. So, all of them have sections for student leaders and which student is involved in that. So, I would just go to the department website, people in the department and see uh, who are the peer mentors. So, for sure, all the department have these peer mentors. So, at the minimum, those would be the people I would just uh, contact. And then uh, if you're interested in a specific research group, it's also a good idea to contact those students as well. Yeah, I think uh, basically I would just use the department website. Also, just to add on that, if it's not listed within the website or that particular website, you can reach out to the graduate chair and ask for those emails if it's not listed. And just to add on that a little bit more, it's okay to just email people out of nowhere. Grad students, PhD students, everyone gets email from strangers. Um, all the time so it's, it's totally okay to 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 do that don't be afraid that you're interrupting that if they don't have time they just won't respond but if they do they will respond to you yeah definitely i know that y'all answered any uh, a couple of this in the chat but could you elaborate on any mental health resources that you would recommend on campus mm -hmm. I think CAPS is a good resource. So uh, CAPS, like you can um, uh, search that online. So they have a, a couple of counselors, like not couple, like uh, multiple counselors available. And for uh, students in uh, biology, we have something called Office of Graduate and uh, Postdoctoral Studies. They have uh, uh, counselors for the students uh, for people within their office so it might be uh, a good resource as well and then our insurance uh, covers uh, many uh, therapists and psychologists around the campus with a $25 copay and uh, I know there are like a couple of uh, organizations on campus that would refund the copay because sometimes the money just keeps adding up <laughs> if you have to use it frequently. So there is a way to get that money reimbursed sometime. So I think it, it is good, but I think there could be more. <laughs> I can speak a little bit more about like how to find a therapist. If you need to establish a long-term therapist, I recommend to start early because I think of it as a preventive thing. It's like you've taken vitamin C to vent, pre to prevent yourself from being sick. Um, so, um, so I do really recommend because sometimes the stress are chronic and you don't know when it's gonna explode. And I, um, so what I did is I went to the Psychology Today website. And then from there, you can look for a list of the therapists that's around this area. Um, but the downside is it's not um, you need you might need to filter like who take our insurance so you don't need to pay like $160 per session. You only have to do like the $25 copay. So um, I know like it takes a lot of time and energy to establish that, but I feel like that's really worth it and that's very important step for your um, self-care. 
I think to add on that, um, CAPS has uh, therapy dogs on certain days. I actually use them. Uh, it's not only fun, but it releases really stress too. So they have those on certain days. Um, the way I found them was through social media, Instagram. Um, and then I will see where will the dogs will be. Uh, and they actually have them more often when it's finals. Um, and they also have them within the department. Well, actually, they have them with my department some days. Um, I'm not sure if that's different for other departments, but I would really, really recommend that too. Y'all, for students coming from tropical countries, um, would you say that during the winters in Ann Arbor, the experience of working and studying could be a little depressing? And if so, how do you manage that? I think I am really qualified to answer that. I am from a coastal tropical state in India with a lot of sunlight and a lot of fish. So I didn't realize both my exposure to sunlight and my diet significantly changed. So I think, yeah, it was really hard. But what helped is like... Um, I had people around who were Indians who kind of gave me warning signs. Oh, there is something called winter blues. And I thought it was a made up thing. But then when my energy level started dropping, I really, I did go to visit a doctor and then she did really see through it and I wouldn't believe it. And then she was like, oh, your vitamin D is like, level is like plummeting. So I did a test to see if it's a real thing. And then, yeah, taking a lot of vitamin D supplements, spending time, outside and then really investing in like self-care during winter is important so I practice a lot of meditation and uh, exercising more uh, regressly than I do in summer during winters and yeah it does spill over a lot to academics so if I'm not in a good mood like I do get uh, about sort of depression sometimes in winter so it's really important to take care of uh, myself in winter months especially so I can be the best version of myself to all people around me and also for my research. <laughs> I am from Taiwan, which is also like a tropical island on Pacific. So, um, but I, uh, before Michigan, I did my undergrad in Wisconsin. So I've been very used to this kind of like winter weather. Um, but I would say like going to exercising helps. I know we all sound like some like spiritual animal who like exercise and meditate every day, but it's, it's just because you really need that because going exercising make you to, you, you release dopamine while you exercise. So it's, it's, it's physiologically really making you, you know, like more energetic and thing. And arguably you cannot do a lot of um, outdoor sports um, or like activities during winter. Um, though, like if you ha happen to love like winter sports, like skiing, skating, that kind of thing, that would also work. But just try to move your bo body, I guess. <laughs> Um, try to like um, engage and still engage in activity um, during winter. Yeah, for me, it's that that was that balance. Um, if I kind of share about a little bit of my experience early on, but it was balance. And also I actually adopted a plant. I don't know where I was like, okay, I'm going to adopt a plant. And there was a green, beautiful plant. And with that being said, I had to really take care of it, right? Like I took care of myself, drinking more water, eating. And I think that really helped me because I don't know much of how, how to take care of a plant. And so I did all the research I could. And so that helped me create a new hobby. And so that really helped me during the winter time. Y'all have any recommendations for the SIM, the type of SIM card to get? Here in the US. I <laughs> I recommend visible. Um, so yeah, it's like for the first ones, it's only like ten dollars a month for later on, uh it's 30 a month. Yeah. Any recommendation for other panelists? <laughs> I think I have AT&T. I think it's just like any other network. Yeah. I mean, if you can find a group of people, you can always do like a family plan. 
Um, I have family fun with AT and T, and that's um, cheaper than um, if you sign up like individually. And um, I would just put on the note that T Mobile and Mint has really bad signal here. Ann Arbor does not have a good signal, so AT and T is pretty much the only thing that works. That works like covers most of the campus. <laughs> So can you list the things that um, the incoming students need to do before coming to the university? Are there, is there something on a checklist that you could say like, oh, you should definitely do this or you shouldn't do this? Someone gave the example, for instance, like signing up for the patient portal. I think this has nothing to do with academics, but I think like slowly prepare yourself from wherever you're coming. And like you all said, you know, sometimes being away from home is kind of hard. Um, or if this is your first time moving away, it could be like a little extra hard. So just like mentally prepare yourself and tell yourself that how awesome you are, you know, like wherever you go, like how awesome you are and how awesome you'll be doing um, just to prepare yourself slowly. Right now, four years seems like a really long time to me because grad school was so harsh. <laughs> so, but still, like, I think uh, in India, I said I was on a residential campus. So it was really easy to be a student. Like, I didn't have any responsibilities other than studying and being alive. <laughs> uh, so here it's uh, harder. Like, I had to do grocery shopping I had to cook by myself I had an apartment to look after so this was a lot of uh, responsibilities added on top of each other so I just remember probably I was a little grumpy in the first few months that I had a lot of added responsibility so I wish I had like prepared myself a little bit for that because student in the U.S. is not like being a student uh, in India. I would agree with that. Um, so basically be prepared to be a full adult. You need to take care of your bill. You need to open a bank account. You need to do grocery shopping. You need to feed yourself and you need to sleep. So it's it's very difficult to do all of those at the same time. And you wouldn't realize it until you actually do it. So um, somebody asked about like um, getting a card and banks. So I was, uh, there are a couple of banks um, on campus. I would say just, um, they're pretty similar to my knowledge. But one thing to keep in mind is that if you ever, if you ever, if you're ever like moving away from Michigan or like moving to other states, um, there are like some smaller banks that does not have branches all over the country. So that's something to keep in mind. So um, if you want to look for something that's more available across the country, maybe like Chase or Bank of America would be your top choice. Um, and uh, in terms of MCAR, it's pretty easy. I think as far as I can remember, you apply online and you schedule a time to pick up and that's it. Okay, y'all, this will be our final question. Um... Could you speak um, along these lines? Could y'all speak about applying for social security numbers and driver's licenses, et cetera? Hmm. I think for driver's license, there was like uh, a session or something Raka organized. So some of the officials were on campus because for some students who come on fellowship, uh, like me, I was not eligible for a social security number in my first year. So uh, we could go to the uh, office and get an ineligibility for social security or something like that, and then use that to apply for a driver's license for those students who are not eligible for a social security number in their first year. In general, I think I would watch out for the orientation that Rakim gives and some of the emails to international students from Rakim, and also just uh, know a few international students in your senior years. As far as I know, there was a session specifically for giving this uh, ineligibility letter, which would help get a driver's license. And for social security number, I think you have to apply on your own afterwards uh, when you become eligible for one.
I can speak a little bit about the social uh, security number. Um, so uh, if you want to get the SSN, the one thing that you should find a job on campus as an international student. And during the vacation that you can work as full time, I mean, I just talk in my experience because I, right now I'm um, working on campus. Um, so if you plan to work on campus, like work or work and study or whatever. So if you once you once you get a job, so you can so you can get this um so you're gonna go through the process with the international center. So if you um if you're curious that you can go to the international center website to see their like step to guide you through like how to get your social security number. Usually it's pretty fast like within 15 days then you can get a card like a paper card. Okay, before we part ways, I'd love to hear from the panelists about the biggest piece of advice you'd like to leave our incoming students with as they begin their journey. Uh, I think I would say, like, just um, re-emphasize everything I just said so far, which would be like to reach out to all the resources on campus and really make good connections, like more meaningful relationship with people, like be it friends or uh, make multiple mentors. Like I am lucky that I have a very good research advisors, but it's, they don't, they're not many numbers. So it's not a bad idea to reach out to more mentors. So have a group of people. And uh, now I really appreciate it. it does take a village to make a good student student or a good grad student. So like uh, make as many meaningful connection with as many people as possible. I would I would second a lot of that. Um, I think the most important things is don't be afraid to ask for help. I know like you could feel like, oh, am I stupid to ask this question? It's but the, the fact is, it's most likely that there's another person who also has this question. And it's important to, to make connections and to make friends who you can at least vent to when you need to, you know, like complain about things. And um, I would also agree if, um, especially if you're doing research or, or not, I guess, um, it's important to have multiple mentors because they can provide you support from different um, aspects. So, um, so yeah, so um, I would say try to build a support network um, of professors, mentors, and peers. I think for me, it would be a step out of your comfort zone, um, whether it's academically or socially, and it's okay if you get a no for an answer, maybe bigger things will come your way. So yeah, like really be out there and it's okay if you don't feel like really being out there, but that definitely helped me. Um, so my advice is um, kind of similar, like building networks and not being afraid of uh, seeking help for people. So we should spend more time like making connections with faculty members um, peers were the people in your field of study. So this relationship can be very uh, invaluable, like for your academic, academic growth or like internships or job opportunities. So probably can find the peers who, in, who are doing research project with you, or you are finding that friends who are doing like course project, or even you are doing the business pitch competition, or you, even you are like finding the peers, like just like going for grocery shopping. So there are a lot of a connection that you can make. And you, if you have ever, you, if you ever have doubts or questions, like you should take the initiative to ask and learn from them. So yeah, like as Eric said, like, don't think you're stupid because everybody gonna ask the question. If you don't ask, you will never know, right? Like everybody's not starting to be very knowledgeable. Like everybody's starting to be like, don't know everything, but if we ask each other, like as a community, like everybody is happy to share with their uh, experience and to give you really, really helpful like suggestions. So never be uh, afraid of asking. Can I just add one more thing? Um, 
especially don't think that you're asking this stupid question because you're international and you don't know you don't know things because domestic students they also have a lot of questions and it's not don't think less of yourself because you're international and you're new to here you it, it's 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 because of that you need to ask that question and um I know it could be scary, and um, I know to a lot of us, um, English is not your it's not your um, first language, so there is a lot of concerns when even like speaking up. But um, that's very important to remind yourself you're asking questions because you're international and you're new to here. Thanks, y'all. That that was um, really insightful. I want to. Thank everyone in the audience today for their presence and their participation. And I want to thank our panelists for giving both their time and their expertise to us today. The recording of this event will be sent to you when it has been processed. And remember to take the evaluation survey when you can. The panelist emails are in the chat. And um, yeah, you can reach out to them if you, if you have any further questions. Thank you. Take care of yourselves.